one of the things that you're just going to have to get used to and figure out how to do pretty early on in your SSIS career is how to send emails with attachments. Okay, well, you know, it seems pretty simple enough. Let me create us a little package here. Um, oops, I don't want a new website. I want a new SSIS project. So it's actually not a difficult concept, right? You've got, uh, let's say, a data flow task. And so this is step one, create Excel file. And then, you know, step number two, be fairly simple, send an email. Uh, not that difficult. We'll go to our data flow. Let's just um, grab a source. So let's get, we'll just take the data in a table. Now this would probably be executing a stored procedure or the results of a query. Uh, for this demo though, I'm going to focus on sending an email and not focus on other aspects. So I'm going to use the AdventureWorks 2008 database and let's just dump out the human resources dot department database. So we're just going to put this out to an Excel spreadsheet and that come over here and so I say now let's make ourselves an Excel spreadsheet and we'll call this Excel spreadsheet our report dot xls uh, give it the name just in the let's call the worksheet report and put it there mappings up if I, I know that was actually pretty fast but if i seem like i went fast it's probably because you haven't put enough work in already to understand data flow. I mean, we did a ton of data flow in chapters four, five, and, and really in chapter six already. So if I seem to have gone fast, then maybe you need to kind of circle back and watch some of those other videos. That might not be a bad idea. Okay, so I've got a text file, and so step two, uh, send myself an email. And so coming into step two, let's go ahead, we'll make an SMTP connection. And oh no, uh, here is the horror of the send mail task. It doesn't allow us to put passwords in here. No usernames, no passwords. And so as we learned about earlier in chapter four, the send mail task is almost utterly useless. So the only time you're ever really going to be able to use the send mail task is for intranet. So things where you're able to authenticate using Windows and that would only really be on the intranet. So it's really garbage to use the send mail task. It's not going to be an option. So as we talked about in chapter 4, you've got to bring in the send mail task. Okay, so now step 2 would be send mail. And we actually set this up, and I just grabbed the send mail task, and didn't I? meant to grab the script task. Step two, send email. And so I come down here and, you know, what language do you want? I think I did VB as the last one, so I'm going to do this one. Edit the script. I'll do C sharp. And you need to use the .NET framework. This is one technique. Uh, those of you that are experienced in .NET know that you can get third-party controls to do some of this. Uh, but I'm just going to simply take advantage of the mail message. So I'm going to bring in system.net and system.net.mail. Uh, so system.net is going to allow me to use the network credential class, which will let me define my username and password. And system.net.mail has the mail message class that I can compose and send my message through. Uh, those of you in VB, you would import these instead of using them. So uh, let's just do this. Let's just get a little variable here. And look, we'll make a new mail message. And let's just add to, and let's send it to Scott's temp email at gmail.com. And just like I talked about in the video where we talked about how to do this originally, I don't check that email, so 
It's just really for this course. Uh, so the mailer dot from uh, let's just a new uh, we could say uh, it's from Scott uh, Scott's temp from myself and the display name would be Scott Wiggum. Uh, and do you want that now you could just start playing with the various properties here so um, Gosh, uh, what do we want to do here? Is the body, do you want to send an HTML email? Um, sure. Uh, so then, uh, what else? What priority do you want to send? What do you want the subject to be uh, from SSIS? Right, I mean, you could just play around with the various properties that you need to, etc. Not a problem. Um, the attachments. dot add and you simply define a new attachment so uh, so new attachment and it's really not that difficult so you could pass in what did we call that file name it was our report dot xls right so c our report dot xls here and what else do we need to do here I think that's probably uh, we need to assign an, a body to this so the body um, you know usually you'd have some fancy stuff so we could say like table uh, you know hey Scott. I mean, you write as fancy of XML HTML as you want you could of course bring this in from uh, the external file uh, you could load it up from a website using the HTTP uh, HTML utility class. Uh, about the only thing that we haven't defined now is how we want to actually send this. Uh, is this SMTP? Is it IMAP? How do you want to send it? Okay, this is where you need to instantiate an instance of the SMTP client. Okay, so so we'll call it my client, and this is a new SMTP client. And so what's the server name? You cycle through. So we'll choose, I'm going to use Gmail. And I need to send through port 587 here. Uh, OK, so Gmail requires, like many people, uh, like many servers, they do require that we use an SSL connection. So we need to set the enable SSL property. And then we have to define how it will be delivered. So SMTP delivery method. This is a network. So and let's see. You can play around with the properties and methods and kind of figure out what you need to do. One of the things that we have to define are our credentials. How do we log in? How do we authenticate to Gmail? So this is why we imported the system.net namespace because we need to use a network credential and so we are authenticating and we just pass in our email address Scott's temp and then your password and I'll separate this onto a separate line so we can see that there okay. Uh, really, that's it. We just now have to send it. So we now say we want to send, and we want to send the mailer. And just to make sure that everybody understands what this is, the mailer is the email. So everywhere you see the, the mailer, we are defining the contents, the to, the from. The my client is the actual transport mechanism. So down here, we're saying over the transport mechanism, we want to send our email. Now for those of you on VB this is the same thing. There's the only thing that you're not going to have here are uh, you're not going to be terminating with semicolons. You'll have a capital N uh, here. Um, you'll have as so you could either say uh, var my client as new SMTP client or you can do equal new. Um, you'll be a capital T here for your true uh, you know, capital N those are really about the only differences. You still will be using um, system.net, system.net.mail. Okay, I'm ready. Let's see, this is coming from Scott Wiggum. And let's just 
check it out here. Oops, it says I've got an error message. Um, oh, I remember. Do you see our little squiggly right there? Well, so what this is telling us is that in C sharp, turn it blue here, um, in C sharp slash in a string defines an escape sequence. So slash O is what the C sharp compiler is looking for in its known escape sequences list. And it doesn't find slash O. Slash O has no meaning. Had it been slash N, that would have been the new line character. Had it been slash T, lowercase t, that would have been the tab character. But it doesn't know what slash O is. And if we take a look, you can, uh, let's see, unrecognized escape sequence. You got a couple of ways around this one. You can simply put two backslashes in there and this will work. This basically says, you know what, this is not an escape sequence. I actually want a single backslash put in there. Or you can put an at sign in front. By putting an at sign in front that says this has no escape characters at all in it. Just use the literal content. And that's the one I'd prefer for this. I never am going to have an escape sequence in a file name. I'm never going to have a tab character. I'm never going to have a new line character in a file name. So we're good to go. Let's see. Yes. Let's test it out. Does it actually work? We create our file. Success in sending our mail. Looks like we do, in fact, have a mail. It comes from Scott Wiggum from SSIS. Um, and you can see it did, in fact, send our data with it. Very cool. Okay, so that's the basics. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. That's the basic setup. Now, I'm going to go ahead and stop here, and let's come back in part two, and let's talk about how to make this dynamic.